Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Nishant Lakshmi Kanta and I'm the surgical educator at Prep Ladder for SS. So you guys are fresh out of your NEET SS 2025 exam. I know it's time to unwind, but let's just have a quick run through or the analysis of the NEET SS Surgery 2025 paper. Now, my first initial impression was that it was a decent paper. It was a straightforward paper. But then again, uh, I did also talk to a lot of students, then um, collected all the recall questions and based on their feedback, I am giving you my analysis. All right. So it might be a bit biased because I'm talking to a set of students and that doesn't represent the entire population. So even the questions when it when we do the recall session as well. So even the questions again, what I've um, collected are again based on various sources. So there might be a few errors when it comes to the stem or the way the options are worded. So if there is something I will ask you guys to get back in touch with me. Now having said that again, uh, let me give you my initial analysis or impression. When it comes to the difficulty, I personally felt it was a straightforward paper. Okay, it was a good mix of easy and um, moderate and tough questions. Whereas when I spoke to the students, they felt it was a slightly moderate to a difficult sort of paper, but more or less moderate. Majority of them felt was uh, felt that it was a moderate or a well balanced paper when we are talking about the difficulty. And we come and when we come to the type of questions predominantly conceptual based questions a lot of conceptual or concept based questions were asked and uh, which again goes to show that if your concepts are strong you should be able to crack this exam quite easily when it comes to distribution with regards to the systems it was a git predominant paper but then again few questions from the other systems can get mixed with GIT. For example, onco questions can be mixed with GIT. Trauma questions can be mixed with GIT. General surgery questions can be mixed with GIT. But having said that, if your grasp over GIT is good, again, you would have done or kind of cleared at least one third of the paper quite easily. Now, with regards to the sources that way, they have kind of stuck to their guns. If you have covered your Sabiston, that's your Holy Grail or your Schwartz. I felt almost 90 to 95% of the questions were from these two textbooks. So if you have read them at least once or twice, I'm sure you guys would have done quite well in this paper. Now, having said that, let's just kind of look at the various questions that were asked with regards to the systems. So like I said, it was a GIT heavy question paper according to me. So almost 30 to 40 questions based on whatever I could calculate from the recall questions were from GIT. Now the surprising element here was that there was a good number of questions from bariatric surgery. Okay, at least about four or five questions that I could see that were from bariatric surgery. Then as usual, a lot of hepatobiliary questions, predominantly again from gallbladder and the biliary tree. So this is kind of something similar to what you would have faced even in your uh, neat PG days. Okay, so a lot of questions on gallbladder and the biliary tree. What surprised me was that there was a lot of hernia questions. Something as simple as an ame and hernia. Then they had questions on strangulated hernia. They had questions on diaphragmatic hernia. So everything possible under hernia they had asked. As far as I could see, I at least found about four or five questions on hernia alone. So again, a lot of questions from hernia had been asked in this particular paper. Then moving ahead to endocrine. Again, you had questions on thyroid and breast. These were quite expected. You also had questions on parathyroid. Now this is some place where your concept was kind of tested because most of the times you think it's a pretty straightforward uh, question but uh, like I said the devil lies in the details. So there was one question where uh, it was confusing between a parathyroid adenoma versus a parathyroid carcinoma. So if you have kind of understood or heard the endocrine lectures you will know that uh, if it is very severe it kind of falls into a parathyroid carcinoma sort of a picture as compared to a parathyroid adenoma even though the symptoms are overlapping. Then you had questions on men's syndrome. So this was quite okay. 
but the tricky bit was that they had asked you one particular thing which you normally don't treat that is all your uh, uh, skin lesions which were associated with the men 2a syndrome but again a little bit of application if you kind of at least knew that it was men syndrome you could have kind of caught on to the diagnosis and you could have answered that question from there we move on to urology so urology was quite okay the same old uh, uh, questions on post urethral valve few image based questions then you had questions on undescended testes and how to manage them you had questions on renal trauma and one very easy question as to approach to a patient with a renal trauma that was a midline incision then as usual you had questions on testicular tumors um, stage 2 non seminomatous germ cell tumor how are you going to manage them so all more or less uh, pretty straight forward nothing very complex nothing very complicated in terms of urology based questions you also had questions on urethral trauma again all those are pretty straight forward nothing too great about it then moving on to cardiothoracic surgery again um, not many surprises here good number of questions from ca lung then there were some questions on paraneoplastic syndrome as in um, which particular cancer you going to find these paraneoplastic syndromes that was a small cell lung cancer then you had some questions on congenital heart conditions so um if you were interested into cardiothoracic surgery you should have kind of looked into all of these and there were a few questions uh, based on them then onco questions there were no questions on basics of onco surgery but then again there were a lot of questions that were kind of mixed with git so you had questions on hepatoblastoma then you had questions which were mixed with urology like testicular tumors so onco per se there was nothing too great about it but a lot of questions like i said mixed with the other topics then you had questions on surgical procedures like for example there was one question on uh, anterior resection where they asked you what is the next step where you are going to ligate the blood vessels and stuff like that so that was about onco surgery but what i felt the game changer was is that it was radiology okay now i know that radiology is a part and parcel of surgery but most of the times what happens is even before you see the image from the stem of the question you were able to get the diagnosis okay and the radiological image was just a addendum okay something that is extra to help you convince yourself what the answer was so as usual neurosurgery may there was edh sdh but one uh, purely radiological question that was calculation of the blood clot volume so they had given you the length the width the thickness and the number of slices and they had asked you to calculate the blood volume so this was a out and out radiology question which normally we tend to miss as surgeons then in git there was uh, one particular case where there was a toss up between a esophageal perforation versus a gastric volvulus because the in terms of symptoms both of them can present with similar symptoms but there was the radiological image which was quite glaringly obvious so this is one uh, particular question where the image kind of gave you more information than the stem of the question then apart from that you had certain incidentalomas uh, there again that was an image based question they put up an image given you the size and asked you what the management was then there was a question on mallet's finger now this this i felt was slightly tricky because normally we tend to see the physical image of mallet's finger but we rarely get to see the radiological image so here they put the radiological image and asked you to diagnose the condition then there were few mammography based uh, questions as well so in short if your radiology was pretty strong you could have cracked at least 80 to 90% of these questions quite comfortably um having said that uh, i would like to repeat myself i felt it was a pretty straightforward paper not too easy not too tough a good mix of all the questions now for those of you who um, kind of gone through all the lectures gone through the notes and i'm sure most of you will have a very strong hold of your concepts you already kind of know from the bottom of your heart that you've cracked the exam for those of you who are in doubt please don't worry the game is never over till the last ball is done okay so wait for the results you can ne you never know what's going to happen miracles do happen okay so wait for the results 
and for the freshers out there who have just kind of given the first attempt as a feeler and would like to now start preparing for your NEET SS 2026 or your INICET exams, please start right away. Okay, it's never too early to start preparing. So Prep Ladder is offering a good offer right now or 25% off on uh, the courses. Uh, please do at least download the app, watch uh, a few demo videos and you'll kind of get to know in what detailed analysis we have kind of um, done the lecture videos and the notes and the MCQs. A lot of effort has gone into it and we have kind of made sure that it's not too vast at the same time that we're not skipping out on any important points. So having said that, uh, I will uh, see you guys uh, shortly with the recall session. So we have uh, collected a good number of questions. So we'll uh, see you again for the recall session. Until then, goodbye. Happy holidays.